Welcome to the Shreveport Connection with Tommy. This video is on your Beyond Wrestling results uh, from uh, earlier than the weekend and also Slammiversary from TNA results. Uh, uh, Beyond Wrestling, Life Sucks and Then You Die. Results from Providence, Rhode Island at Feet Music. Uh, report uh, by Zach Zimmerman from ProWrestling.net. Uh, before the show, it was announced that Candice LeRae was forced to miss the show because of an ankle injury. Her partner, Joey Ryan, was there nonetheless, and the card has slightly been reshuffled around. Things kicked off about 45 minutes late. In true indie uh, wrestling fashion, owner Drew Cord Cordero also reportedly gave the ordinance before the show for no swearing, an ordinance which was not only broken, but utterly trampled and virtually every wrestler on the show and the ring announcer as well. Come on, guys. It's not 1999. Uh, the rearranged show opened with Team Tremendous coming out and beginning to discuss how they needed to uh, some new opponents because of LeRae's injury. The Kingdom's music hit, and out they come to fill the role. They promoted it. And the best team in Beyond versus the best team in the world. The Kingdom with Michael Bennett and Matt Taven over Team Tremendous. Of uh, Dan Barry and uh, Bill Carr. The match was a lot of fun. Both teams were having a good time. They did some on-the-fly comedy stuff to start off. Which got over uh, very well. The pace picked up, and it ended up being a really nice ride from beginning to end. The finish came when Maria Canellis came out to distract the referee, and the kingdom got the pin after a belt shot. And after the match, Carr walked out on Barry in frustration. Match number two was Colt Cabana won a three-way dance with a uh, no dicks disqualification match over Johnny Cockstrong and Joey, Joey Ryan. The rules of the match were that the low blows and the genitalia-based offense were legal. It was good for some some laughs, and the crowd seemed to enjoy it. But it was was definitely lewd, and I can't imagine what the non-wrestling people working at feet were thinking. Cockstrong pinned Ryan first with a pile driver while Ryan's head was buried in, inside Cockstrong's trunk. <coughs> uh, Cabana won with it in the end when he tapped Cockstrong to Billy Goat's curse. And there was an appropriate, that was weird chant afterwards before Team P Pazuzu ran out and attacked a trend which would continue. Piazza's uh, uh, scheduled opponents ran out to even things up and led right into the next match. Team Pazuzu of Pinky Sanchez, Jaka, Angel Ortiz, and Mike Drastic defeated D uh, Davey Vega, Ricky Shane Page, Eric Corvus, and Mike Quest. This one was just an okay match. It didn't uh, overstay its welcome. Match number four, David Starr pinned Anthony Stone with a roll-up. And Starr roll, uh, called out the injured Dave Cole who was fresh off major knee surgery and clearly unable to compete. So he brought out his buddy Stone instead. Another decent match that didn't overstay its welcome. Both guys worked very hard for their match. Match number five was the hit squad of Mafia and Monster Mac over the hooligans of Devin and Mason Cutter. <coughs> Egregious and uncomfortable violence in this match. With numerous unprotected chair shots and dangerous bumps, the finish came after a power bomb off the stage through a table. Team Pazuzu attacked afterwards. Hit Squad cut a promo on Pazuzu's Chris Dickinson and Heidi Lovelace. He said "bitch" and "ho" various uh, times through through, the, through their engagement. Tried to make a gay marriage joke about Dickinson and Lovelace, none of which uh, got over well at all. It really seemed like they had a lot of uh, these guys grew up watching ECW and still think that's what's cool in wrestling. And then they had intermission. 
Before the start of the second half of the show, owner Drew Cordero came back out and hyped their annual biggest show of the year, American Rana. For July 26th, he, he uh, recalled selling out the music last year and is committed to selling it out in record time this year. And moving to the action, match number six, John Donovan Dijak defeated Biff Busick. This was an excellent match as Biff was the most popular guy on the card and was received warmly with welcome back chants from his home crowd. Good heat for Dijak and who has been unstoppable in, in Beyond Wrestling thus far. Biff bled and fought well from underneath against the big man, getting in some uh, big bright spots, but ultimately falling to G-Jock's burning hammer. G GTS finish. Afterwards, the kingdom came out onto the stage and mocked Biff. They made their way to the ring where they cornered a worn-out Biff until Drew Gullick ran down from the balcony to chase them out of the ring. Then... The Kingdom vs. Biff Music and Drew Gallick was set for American Runner 2015. And then we got match number seven, Death by Elbow. A tag team of uh, Chris Hero and JT Dunn defeating the hoods of Chris Pyro and Davey Cash. Before the match, Hero talked about how the shakeup left them without their scheduled opponents. So he and uh, Dunn challenged the Hoods, who happily answered. After a solid showing, Hero and Dunn won with their double rolling elbow massacre. Afterwards, Hero cut a promo on behalf of his team challenging the Young Bucks to a match at American Rana 2015. Match number eight, Nick, K uh, Nick Gage over Stockade in a no disqualification match. This was another CZW backslash ECW inspired walking brawl. The style doesn't do much for me, but Gage is undeniably one of the more popular guys that Beyond Wrestling has been booking on, on recent shows as Gage won with his choke slam backbreaker. Match number nine, Team Pazuzu of Chris Dickinson and Heidi Lovelace defeated Shinron and Kimberly. And they worked uh, this under tornado rules, which kept the action at a fun pace, but also opened things up to some man-on-woman spots, though it never got too uncomfortable. Lovelace pinned Lee using Lee's own patented alligator clutch pin after a low blow. The rest of the Pazuzu ran out and attacked Shinron and Lee. Nick Gage and the Hit Squad came out to even things up, but they were ultimately fended off as the segment ended with Pazuzu holding firm in the ring and the baby faces backing off. This appeared to be the setting up of a big Team Pazuzu versus Baby Faces of Beyond Tag Match. Match number 10, A.R. Fox with Miss Fox defeated Paul London. First of all, congrats to the real-life newlywed Foxes. As for the match, London's entrance is a funny 20-minute ordeal with him donning an orange NASA jumpsuit, doing multiple laps of high fives around both levels of feet, as well as going out of the emergency exit on the balcony and coming back in through the fan entrance, and they label this one the Please Don't Die match, uh, which proved relatively appropriate with some wild dives, including a shooting star off the stage from London. Believe it or not, Fox left some of his usual tricks in the bag, which is uncharacteristically good for both the uh, his ability to tell different stories in the ring and for his longevity. There was a believable fall, uh, false uh, pin when uh, Miss Fox took an advantage of Fox distracting the ref by hitting a flip pile driver, which Fox followed up with a low main pain. And the actual finish came when London missed a super runner and took a 450 splash from Fox. After the match, London put over Beyond Wrestling. The fans, and above all else, A.R. Fox. He said that Fox is the evolution of what this business is becoming. And then London thanked everyone, and then finally left the ring to, to Fox out of respect to close the show. A short time after the conclusion of the show, Colt Cabana recorded a live edition of his own Art of Wrestling podcast to be released in the future, featuring... Nick Gage, 
Rick Palladino, Team Tremendous, Steve the Turtle Whiner, and Joey Ryan. And that ended the, the, the uh, results for Beyond Wrestling. And now, breaking news, Global Force Wrestling issued the following today update on TNA former World Heavyweight Champion and UK Superstar Nick Aldis, formerly known as Magnus and at TNA Wrestling, has signed on with Global Force Wrestling and will be part of their next GFW Grand Slam tour. Live events on July, July 9th in Wisconsin, July 10th in, P in Pennsylvania, July 11th in Ohio. He will also be headlining the first ever world television taping on July 24th in Las Vegas. Uh, and he's quoted by saying, I'm ready to explore opportunities as a free agent that haven't been open to me before, as Jeff Jarrett has been instrumental in my career development. And I have always respected him as a performer and promoter. As soon as I heard about GFW, I knew that one way or another, I would play part. I'm very excited about that, as said Aldous. GFW founder and CEO could not be happier that, that Magnus has decided to join the force. Nick is one of the brightest stars in professional wrestling today. And I cannot be more excited to have him in front and center in Promoting GFW, his star power in the UK will help give Global Force Wrestling the brand exposure we are looking for. All this also appeared on the UK revival of Gladiators, where he was known as, by the name of Oblivion. All this star power transcends pro wrestling, and he is someone that we have had our eyes on for months, as Karen Jarrett, co founder of Global Wrestling, said. <coughs> And now for what everybody's been waiting for, TNA Slammiversary 2015 results. Aired live on the pay-per-view. I got it on USA Goals. After I woke up at seven, uh, five minutes after seven, when the program started five minutes earlier, uh, as pre uh, President Dixie Carter announced that Jeff Jarrett will be the newest member of the TNA Hall of Fame. It's and the co-founder of TNA is uh, certainly a worth, a, worth a worthy addition to the company's Hall of Fame. Jarrett will also be joining Sting, Team 3D, and Kurt Angle. The event opened with shots of the King of the Mountain match participants arriving at the building earlier in the day. A video package featuring the early days of TNA and notable events such as Hulk Hogan appearing, Kurt Angle and Samoa Joe's pull-apart brawl, Sting and TNA, and more. Josh Matthews, the Pope D'Angelo De Niro, and Mike Tanay were on commentary for the pay-per-view. Match number one, Tiger Uno versus Manic versus DJZ in an elimination match for the X Division title. So much for my belief that this is was a singles match. Uno pinned Z to eliminate him from the match at 9 minutes 35 seconds in. Uh, the match came down to Manic and his cheesy hood facing Uno. Manic performed a frog splash for a good near fall in 11 minutes 30 seconds in. Uno came back and got the win with a springboard backflip into a double leg drop. Uno defeated Manic and DJ Z in an elimination match to retain the exhibition title in 12 minutes 5 seconds. Good effort from all three men, but it's uh, really hard to care about the title match when the three men have been treated like glorified jobbers for so long. It's going to take more than a win winning a green title belt to make viewers see Uno as more than an enhancement guy. This is a baby step in that direction, but he needs a strong opponent. By the way, it's nice to hear that Mike Tanay is back on commentary. He was the voice of a bad product for too long, and the change to Josh Matthews was needed. Yet it still was, still is a welcome surprise to hear him on commentary, despite the intense hatred of most three-man booths. Backstage segment with Jeremy Boris acting the fans and business partners before interviewing Robbie E., who spazzed out for a moment. Fortunately, he said that Robbie E. is out, out the door and gone. He spoke in a calmer voice, and he said, Jesse tried to take him out by running him into the ring post. Then he said, uh, Jesse Gutters is nothing. The fans don't think he's the man. He'll always be his bitch. 
Well, that was all he said. Uh, I wasn't a fan of that promo. Showing the difference between old Robbie and new Robbie was okay. Even that, that is not got his blonde spikes. He's got his, the sting, dark haired look, but still spiked. Uh, but why tear down the guy when you're about to face? If you beat him, you beat a guy that is nothing. And if you lose, even worse. I'd also like to see Robbie E. ditch his name in favor of going with Rob Echoes to drive home that he's a new man, even if that's his old indie name. Jesse Goddard has made his entrance for his match with Robbie E. as Jesse took the mic and cut a promo, a very long promo, about Robbie calling him a bitch. Look at me, he said a few times, posing. Uh, look at the man that I am. He said he was, he was stuck with Robbie, the bro, the boy. He called the fans triple-digit heart attacks waiting to happen. He said you can't sit, around, uh, sit behind a keyboard and drink coffee and look like he does. He kept babbling until Robbie's music mercifully interrupted him and they fought at ringside. So we got match number two, Robbie E. versus Jesse Goddard. And by the way, I caught the uh, ending to that f uh, first match as Uno was getting the win. <clears throat> okay, back to the match. Uh, Robbie E. versus Jesse Goddard. Uh, Jesse controlled the offense early and posed a lot. Robbie caught Jesse with a boot to the head and then caught him with a crossbody off the second rope. Late in the match, Robbie avoided press slam and performed what Matthews called a reverse EDT for the win. In an 11, 11 minute, 35 second match. Uh, this went longer than it needed to go as Robbie hasn't connected as a baby face just yet. Backstage, the segment again with Jeremy Boris interviewing Matt Hardy this time who said he will always be known as one of the greatest tag team wrestlers in history. He said tonight he has a chance to become known as one of the greatest singles wrestler of all time. He said winning the King of the Mountain is important to him. And he plans to add King of the Mountain to his list of nicknames. Ring entrances for the Bram vs. Matt Morgan match. Morgan took the mic and told the crowd their reaction made him feel good. He told Bram that the fans wanted to see them fight, not wrestle. He challenged Bram to a street fight. Tanae pointed out that this seemed to play into Bram's hands. So we get Bram vs. Morgan in a street fight. The blueprint. Morgan grabbed the early advantage with clotheslines. Uh, today noted that Morgan is the only pro wrestler who, uh, who to compete in the NCAA basketball tournament. Didn't Kevin Nash play when his team made it to the 316? Uh, they fought to ringside where Bram reached under the ring and pulled out weapons. Bram hit Morgan with a cookie sheet, a trash can, and then a trash can lid. Back inside the ring... Bram picked up trash can again, but Morgan caught him with a carbon footprint. Bram rega regained control. Uh, Morgan threw punches, but Bram caught him off with a knee. And Bram tried to hit Morgan with a chair, but Morgan grabbed him by the throat, choked him for a two count. Bram came back with a low blow and hit the DDT on the chair for the win in a nine-minute, 30-second match. The outcome shouldn't surprise anyone, as Morgan noted on Twitter that he came back so his young son could see him wrestle. He said it in an interview the reporter conducted with him last year. Uh, he moved on and had a lucrative career outside the wrestling industry. Meanwhile, Bram beat another yet former TNA wrestler. Was this the payoff or is this where more TNA alumni come in? Backstage segment again with Jeremy Boris interviewing EC3 and Tyrus. EC3 said he looks like a champion and feels like a champion, but everyone will see him become a champion on this coming Wednesday's Impact. Tyrus then told EC3 to worry about Kurt Angle. He'll worry about Lashley and Mr. Anderson. Tyrus grabbed Borash and pulled his hair. Borash told him that it was real. If so, that's amazing how much it would be thinning before it was shaved. It's a follicle miracle. Wow. 
how was this even promoted? I don't even remember none of that to, to lead it to this tag match. And Slammiversary, what a way to promote the match. Hmm. Match number four, Austin Aries versus Davey Richards to determine the stipulation for the final match of the best of five series for the vacant TNA titles. Aries targeted the left arm of Richards at 7 minutes 45 seconds. Aries performed a double axe handle off the top rope and onto Richards on the floor. Aries remained the aggressor once they were back inside the ring and picked up a couple of two counts. At 10 minutes 30 seconds in, Aries threw kicks at Richards, who returned the favor. Aries caught his leg and poked his eye. But Richards tossed him to ringside. Richards performed a suicide dive onto Aries. A short time later, back inside the ring, Aries boxed the ears of Richards a few times as Aries followed up with a missile drop kick. Aries then performed a suplex and then applied the last chancery. Richards uh, re reached the rope to break, break up the pin attempt at 14 minutes, 20 seconds in. Aries showed some frustration. Aries went for a brain buzzer, but Richards caught him with a knee to the head to break it up. Richards then performed a running forearm, but Aries uh, came back with a running drop kick. Richards came back with a gut buster for a two count. Crowd chance, this is awesome. Very briefly, as Aries removed his elbow pad, and he and Richards traded shots in mid-ring. Uh, Richards ended up popping up, and Aries kicking him on the way down. A short time later, Richards went up top and howled. They performed a double stop on the way down for a near fall. Bobby Roode walked to ringside and climbed on. Onto the ring apron, Eddie Edwards ran out and pulled him down. Aries rolled Richards and pinned him. After the match, Aries took the mic and said that he and Rude would face the Wolves in a bra and panties match on their back. <laughs> that was funny. He then said uh, Rude would face the Wolves in a 30-minute Iron Man match. And Aries won the bout in 17 minutes, 15 seconds. Uh, best match of the night so far. The finish was pretty lame. They had a really good match. And then it ended with a distraction and a roll-up, as predictable. Dirty Heels, tag team faction. Uh, it's too bad that they didn't just have a Aries go over strong. Well, why do that? Dirty Heels. Backstage seven again. Jeremy Borash in it, interviewing Eric Young about the King of the Mountain match. Young said he's ready to be the new king of the mountain. He said he's willing to do whatever it takes. He said he he's held every, every title in TNA except for the king of the mountain title. He told Jeff Jarrett to look into his eyes. He said he's not afraid of anyone, but Jarrett should be. Uh, uh, well, yeah, no, Eric, you've already held the uh, little... Red toy belt that nobody cared about. Video package focusing on the knockoffs uh, match. Then the sexy, strong, powerful, strong video aired along with the annoying la 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 background music. Uh, you know, the one of the dollhouse. Taryn Terrell, Marty and Jay versus Awesome Kong Brooke. Before the match, Taryn cut a promo about how the dollhouse are the sexiest girls who walk the planet. Brooke came out and bent over to show off her her ass and part of the entrance. <coughs> milk, milk, lemonade around the corner, fudge is made. It's where your poo comes out. Hmm. And this was basically describes the match. Late in the match, Kong grabbed Taryn, but it was broke up by Marty, who would choke Sam McCall. Brooke performed a fa uh, face buster off the top rope on Jade and Pinder. After the match, Taryn cradled her knockouts title and smiled then scolded Marty and Jade. As the faces won the match in an 8 minute and 5 second match. <coughs> Backstage, again, segment with Jeremy Borash interviewing Magnus, who said it was the 13th anniversary of the little company with the big, big dreams. He said the stars are out and ready to shine. He said the smart money is...
that the two of TNA's biggest stars shine bright on pay-per-view for this last time. He said people can say what they want about TNA, and he knows they do, but it seems it's been his home for the last few uh, six years, and he's proud of it. He said Storm tried to take his wife away from him, and I love that woman, man. As Magna said, he said he doesn't hate Storm even though he wants to. He said he loves his fans and family, and he has to believe that love is stronger than hate, even though he loves the way he he, he loves the way hate feels. If someone pushed my wife in front of a train, I'd like to think I would embrace the hate. I certainly wouldn't uh, be pimping my company's anniversary and uh, talking about love over hate. Okay, so I guess no, no one has ever thrown my lady in front of a train, so I can't say for sure, but I do know that I now have an image of Magnus pulling Mickey in close and saying, I love you, man, in true bro style. <clears throat> Video package recapping the saga of James Storm and Mickey James and Magnus. So we get Magnus versus James Storm. Storm took advantage and then pulled out a bottle of wine from underneath the ring. They heard one of the announcers saying he was going too far and took exception. Magnus took control or off of that. A table was set up inside the ring, and Magnus catapulted the storm on into a into the bottle of, of the into the bottom of the table. Storm and Magnus fought around the back of the stage. Video screen messed up uh, for a few seconds. Once they returned, once they were back inside the ring, Magnus power bomb Storm through the table. Storm came back with a hanging DDT and then uh, pulled out another table from underneath the ring. Storm set up the table at ringside. Storm shoved Earl Hebner at ringside because, well, why not? Magnus took advantage of, of that and Storm's, ran Storm's head into the ring post. Magnus set Storm on the table on the floor. Magnus went up top of four, formed an elbow drop. Storm moved and Magnus crashed through the table, leading to the holy shit chance. Storm pulled out some powder, but Magnus shoved his hand, and the powder hit Storm and Hebner in the eyes. Magnus had Storm pinned, but Hebner was blinded by the powder, so there was no pinfall attempt. Storm hit the last call, super kick. Earl can see now. He has legs. Earl countered the pin. But Magnus kicks out of two. Storm grabbed the bull rope because every southern wrestler ever owns one. <clears throat> Magnus stopped him from using it once, but Storm used it a second time and then hit the last call twice and got a, uh, got a two count again. Storm reached under the ring and pulled out a section of guardrail. The guardrail section was set up on two chairs in the middle of the ring, and then Magnus suplex, superplexed Storm onto the guardrail. Production uh, cut to a replay and ruined any chance that any viewer might buy into the near fall that occurred. They're not being paid for this until November. Okay, maybe a little sooner. So who can blame them? Both men grabbed, their, grabbed beer bottles. Just bigger beer bottles, not wine bottles, and as mistakenly listed earlier. And struck each other simultaneously, and Storm fell onto Magnus and got the pin. Yeah, what a finish. And they were also laying on top of the guardrail. And the match took 16 minutes, 40 seconds for that to happen. Uh, love loses again. Embrace the hate, Magnus. In all seriousness, these two worked their asses off to deliver a memorable match, uh, brawl, perhaps on their way out of the door of TNA. Yes, spoiler, James Storm is leaving TNA, as well as, I already told you earlier, Magnus going to... Jeff Jarrett's company. Backstage segment again interviewing Jeremy Borash with Drew Galloway about the final battle between the Rising and the Beatdown Clan. Then they quickly shifted focus to the King of the Mountain match. Galloway said it's his first slam anniversary, his first TNA pay per view, and his first pay per view main event. Well, duh. Because they put the pay per views on a weekly show. Hmm. Go figure. Uh, he said, this is the biggest night of his career. He will be the king of the mountain. And rings out, Josh Matthews said, uh, 
Then cut to a shot of some crew members cleaning up the ring. The sound cut out. Matthews asked if the power was out and whether it had anything to do with what happened with Magnus and Storm. He stopped talking as the Jizz Whoppers or Jizz Moppers uh, continued to work their magic inside the ring. Uh, Matthews acknowledged that they were experiencing technical technical difficulties as music played. And yeah, they were uh, playing an entrance music, but nobody comes out. Then they got a shot of the ring. Are we back? He said, he's asking. Music played again. A woman counted down in the front of the broadcast team. And then EC3's uh, entrance music played. Christy Hemi handled the ring introductions for the next match. Well, it could have been a match. And then canceled it at the last second. But nobody came out. Match number seven, EC3 and Tyrus versus Lashley and Mr. Anderson. Yep, um, Mr. Anderson attempted to uh, do a self-introduction, but the mic didn't work. He gave up and headed to the ring. Five minutes into the match, Anderson impressively hoisted up Tyrus on his shoulders, and but EC3 tripped him up. Yes, they got Anderson tag teaming with Lashley for this match. Well, impressively hoisting Tyrus on his shoulders, EC3 tipped him up. Later, Lashley performed a couple of nice suplexes on EC3 and power signed him for a two count at 7 minutes 40 seconds in. Well, at 9 minutes 35 seconds, Tyrus performed a clunky look at simultaneous suplex on both opponents. Lashley came back with a spear on Tyrus. EC3 hit the one percenter on Lashley and pinned him. After the match, EC3 held up a replica version of the TNA title belt. Well, EC3 and Tyrus defeated Lashley and Mr. Anderson in 10 minutes, 10 seconds. Strange call regardless of the outcome of Wednesday's match, which already was taped, but I won't spoil it yet. That'll be in my next video. Regardless of whether Kurt Angle or the EC3 win, one would think that Lashley would have been protected since he's likely to be a challenger for either end. Broadcast team spoke at ringside about the King of the Mountain match. Matthews and Jarrett is from Global Wrestling. Global Force Wrestling and will be competing against four TNA wrestlers who won't let him win. Backstage, Boras said if anyone had told him seven days ago he would be interviewing his guest, he would have uh, said that they were insane as Boras interviewed Jeff and Karen Jarrett. Jeff said that the wrestling world, the GWF, and TNA Locker Room have been buzzing, Jarrett said. It's all about this moment and the King of the Mountain match. Jared told Borash one last promo. He said he was about to take one last walk down the aisle. He said if he can pull one out of, his, out of this stage of his career, then the championship will, got, will get to another whole other global level. Big entrance is for the main event take, took place. Matthews had the un, unviable task of explaining the rules of the King of the Mountain match. If you don't know the King of the Mountain match, you must get a pinfall or a submission to be qualified to take the belt and put it on the hanging thing using the ladder. Well, match number eight, your main event, Jeff Jarrett with Karen Jarrett at ringside versus Bobby Roode versus Matt Hardy versus Drew Galloway versus Eric Young in a King of Mountain match for the King of the Mountain Championship as Jarrett was a former champion of, the, uh, of this title. Jarrett brought his guitar to the ring with him, set it at ringside. Jeremy Morris handled the intro ring introductions for the main event. As the audio was sketchy at best, crowd chanted for thank you, Jarrett. Karen motioned for the fans to continue. Four TNA wrestlers traded punches while Jeff backed into the corner and watched to start the match. Fans rallied behind Jarrett and told him he still got it. However, Rude rolled him up and pinned him at 2 minutes 30 seconds in. Oh, by the way, if, you get, if the wrestler got pinned, he gets put into the penalty box with nothing but a small cage. Uh, Rude became eligible to win the match by hanging the title belt. And Jarrett went to the penalty box. Four minutes, 50 seconds in. 
Young Pin Jarrett at ringside to become eligible. And Jarrett went back inside the penalty box. Young tried to bring the belt up the ladder, but Hardy pushed the ladder over at 8 minutes 30 seconds in. Hardy pinned Rude and become eligible, and Galloway pinned Young. So both Hardy and Galloway became eligible to win the match. Well, this is almost simultaneously as Hardy got the first uh, pin, and Galloway got, got it three seconds later. While Rude and Young went to the penalty box together, at 9 minutes 55 seconds in, Hardy went for a twist of fate, but Jarrett countered into the stroke. Jarrett had Hardy pinned, but Galloway broke it up. Today's said Hardy was going for his finisher, but because even though he qualified to win, he could still send Jarrett to the box line for two minutes. Nice explanation. Rude and Young apparently agreed to work together. Uh, while they were in the box, despite their recent blood feud, they the uh, they even paid tribute to Team Canada. Yeah, they even sang in the ring. Yeah, they started singing "Oh Canada," uh, which was greeted by the sound of silence from everyone other than the, ex the excited Cheney. As Young quickly turned on Rude <coughs> at 12 minutes 30 seconds in, Galloway and Hardy were pinned by Young and Rude. Galloway and Hardy went off to the penalty box, leaving Jarrett to face the heels. Pope went, uh, went with the WWE logic while talking about how Jarrett had a 33% chance of winning at this point. Uh, Rude and Young worked over Jarrett, who fired back with chops. At ringside, Karen slapped Young, who picked up Jeff's guitar and scared her off. Young brought the guitar inside the ring. Jarrett low-blowed Young, who left the ring. Jarrett hit Rude with the Get your shot and pinned him to become eligible. Many, everyone is finally eligible to win the match. And Rue was off to the box. And there was a goofy spot. <coughs> Where Hardy and Galloway were tucking up at the title and Jarrett pushed the ladder over that landed between them. Fan chain to TNA. At 16 minutes 25 seconds in, Young Pile drove Jarrett off the ring apron onto a ladder that was set up on the apron and the ringside barrier. Later, Galloway flipped off the top rope and onto everyone at ringside. Galloway then climbed the ladder with the title belt. Hardy met him at the top and performed a twist of fate off the ladder. Hardy made a play for the for the <coughs> hook, but Rue stopped him and power bombed him at, at 19 minutes 15 seconds. Then at 20 minutes 25 seconds, Jared performed a stroke on Young off the ladder. And then Jared picked up the title belt and hung it to win the King of the Mountain match. Jared defeated the match at 20 minutes, 25 seconds, and became the King of the Mountain champion again. After the match, the broadcast team questioned what this means for the King of the Mountain championship. Yeah, really, Jared celebrated with, it, with the little red toy belt that nobody cares about. Repurposed as the King of the Mountain championship. Then had his children join him and Karen at ringside to celebrate as the show goes off the air. Wow, what a fluster fob. King of the Mountain match was perfect. Match to close the craziness of a pay-per-view. What a mess. Everyone tried hard, but the King of the Mountain match was always and has been a disaster. And this was no exception. I felt bad for the broadcast team having to question what Jarrett's win means for the King of the Mountain Championship. As if anyone really gives a crap about a repurposed title belt that was introduced for this match. I give uh, the wrestlers credit for the performances. Some deserve more credit than others. But this was one of the worst pay-per-view events in ages. Nothing felt like it really mattered and it just kept Checking the clock to see how much time was left in the meaningless three-hour show, which actually ended at five minutes before the 10 o'clock hour. And that concludes my results for the TNA pay-per-view and the uh, what? results from the Beyond Wrestling event. That's again. Peace out. God bless. See you all. By the way, if you don't know, you better call me, bro.